the main cha changes and uh, transitions right now, I think, uh, involve this question of open access to research. Um, research is changing um, from a, not a private good, but from a restricted good that's limited to university libraries, uh, to journals, to individual subscribers to journals, and it is now becoming, for the very first time, a public resource. Um, and uh, the possibilities of that are very exciting, but it poses many challenges, as I hope we'll have a chance to discuss. Um, but let me emphasize that the, uh, the process right now is about, I like to think it's halfway in terms of the amount of literature that is freely or publicly available. Um, but it's available in such a different array of ways. Um, some of it is illegally available, unfortunately. Some of it is available only in a final draft. And some of it is open uh, and free and complete and published. Uh, and that's the exciting part. And where I think we're moving to a stage where that will become universal. Um, all of the research will be taken as uh, something that is publicly available. Yeah, so let me explain that the Public Knowledge Project, or PKP, um, is something that I started 20 years ago um, and now represents an exciting team of developers, librarians, researchers um, that are focused on improving scholarly communication by developing open source software platforms. So um, what we have been doing is uh, providing the tools is reducing the excuses for not moving in this direction. Um, and originally our goal was to move journals online so they could publish electronically uh, through submission and review and editorial processes. Uh, but journals have moved online, so now our goal is almost exclusively on making sure that those journals are publishing in an open access format. The software is free, so we hope that that contributes in an important way. Um, and the software is increasingly sophisticated in terms of how it handles metrics, how it handles the review process, uh, how it supports the editors. Um, so we're not just about making the research free or open. We want it to be open and we want it to be better. Um, well, it's not fair for me to judge. Um, I leave that to others um, to say. Um, but very much this idea of bringing open source software, um, which is a movement uh, with its own importance and its own position, um, and is perhaps in some ways better known and more, more widely used, um, but to bring open source software to bear on open access. Uh, and so our platform is open source and we're using that to publish on an open access or helping journals to publish on an open access basis. I would say that in terms of the success, we have over 10,000 journals around the world using uh, OJS, which arguably makes it one of the largest platforms of any kind, commercial or open. Um, and that might be partly because of our price. Free is always an advantage in the marketplace in terms of our making the software available. But another important part of open source software and part of our project in terms of its contribution um, is it develops local capacities that uh, OJS is downloaded uh, locally and in most cases we do host and provide publishing services in that regard um, but most of our users have downloaded it locally and have developed the capacity to work with open source software that and they continue to upgrade um, they develop plugins uh, and suggest code they do translations so we've succeeded in the sense of the number of users, but we've also succeeded in the sense of building a community um, that's committed to open source software, the sharing of the platform, um, as well as publishing on it in an open access format. Um, it, it has wider implications, but I think we have to start with a very simple principle um, that it makes research public. I mean, to say that it's free is something I do as well, but we have to be careful that free still means you need a computer and an internet connection. Um, free means that you have to go to the library or someplace where you can uh, get that internet and have the computers. 
Um, the larger implications is on a global basis. So free means that it's globally available in a way that never happened with print. Um, and that global participation is possible, that people can submit articles from anywhere in the world um, as well as read them. So that global as aspect is very important, that public aspect is very important. Um, I am also very interested in things like public, uh, sorry, professional use of the material as well. So the role that public research will play am among doctors and lawyers, teachers, um, engineers and other professionals is another important aspect to it. Mine would automatically drain it of any integrity and value and worth. Monopolies on school books. Monopolies on all of Milton's work. Monopolies of any kind or sort. Uh, sorry, open access in the social sciences has been a bit of a challenge and in the humanities as well. Um, and so that has been a, an interest of ours. The success of open uh, source, excuse me, open access, uh, soft, open access to research um, has been particularly strong in the biomedical field where there's been more research money available. Um, and that's been largely funded by the article processing charge, the APC. Uh, and that level of research funding is not available in the social sciences or in the humanities. So that has acted as a discouraging aspect of open access. So we've been working very hard with a great number of journals that are not using article processing charges. Um, but the reputation of article processing charges is such that we have trouble sometimes overcoming that. So we have uh, many places, many areas of the social sciences where volunteers, where there is no article processing charge, where departments or universities provide support, where things are done uh, on this basis of cooperation rather than commercial, on uh, a commercial basis. And so it's um, been a challenge in a sense and the social sciences and the humanities have not been as advanced or developed in terms of open access. Um, but that's slowly beginning to change. And part of our work has been to develop economic models that will serve the social sciences and humanities. The biomedical field is a very important contribution that it makes, there's no question about that, but we think um, the social sciences and humanities should be just as much a part of public life as any of the STEM areas or the sciences um, and technology more generally. Uh, I'm somewhat simplistic and optimistic at the same time. I think all of the elements of sustainability are currently in place. That is, we are currently funding um, the publication of almost three million articles a year through subscriptions, through library support, through funding agencies, uh, and I think that's enough money. So to sustain open access, we simply need to take the current economy uh, and dedicate it to open access. We need to say to the publishers, um, if this is how much it costs to publish this research, and that's arguable and negotiable, but if it costs this much, um, then let's do it on an open access basis. Let's make sure that everything we do is freely available, uh, and let's guarantee that we're spending about the same amount of money. So the sustainability question um, is real. Uh, we have so many different fragmented systems, there are very different economies, there's great inequality on in how much money is being spent in the biomedical field versus the social sciences, for example. Um, but if we could step back from that and take a simpler basic view that we are currently sustaining a major publishing operation, largely through closed subscriptions, um, and why can't we just begin to make that open? Um, use the same money, um, to pay for the publishing costs um, with one difference, and that is everything that is published is freely available. Now that's very simple. Um, there would be questions from people about the free rider issue and who will pay, um, but I think the funders and I think the libraries are deeply committed to supporting research, and I think they would be, in fact they are, very much committed to open access. Um, so we just need a little bit of trust and faith on everybody's part to come to the table and we need to start with the existing economy and say we want to make one change to that economy.
Yeah, so, the, the, so one of the exciting things about this conference um, um, held here in, in Athens uh, has been its uh, discussion and description and encouragement of networks, international networks. Um, one of the pleasures of working uh, with the Public Knowledge Project has been its international take-up. Um, so 60% of the journals that use OJS are in the Global South. Uh, and we have cooperative agreements with many organizations like Cielo uh, in Brazil and Latin America generally. Uh, we have a user group in Germany. We have worked with INASP um, in Southeast Asia uh, and in Africa. So uh, the, the feeling is that we can um, work together and cooperatively on the basis of extending open access. Uh, and that we can recognize and appreciate and support local journals, uh, individual, or sorry, local and national societies, organizations, groups of libraries. Uh, and in that way, um, we can see that one of the benefits of open access is it moves us away from single disciplines, it moves us away from uh, regions and nations, it moves us away from the hierarchy of the global north. Um, in terms of status and, and, and leading journals into something that's not quite a level playing field yet um, by any means, um, but that is more accessible um, and equitable on that basis. Yeah, we haven't, uh, I, and perhaps I should talk more about open science. I mean, one of the, the, we talked about open source software and open access. Um, but I think the open data movement and open educational resources movements um, are equally a part of that. They have not been our, my group, the Public Knowledge Project's particular focus. We have certainly worked in open data uh, and we do have open educational resources, but our primary focus has been publishing um, the journal articles themselves. So I think it is, uh, my hope is that uh, moving forward we can connect these groups. Um, we can do more to uh, create both an interoperable basis, that is the sharing of protocols and standards so that we can move more easily among them. Um, and at the same time, we can support each other in moving forward. So one of my hopes is that open access journal articles will become a central part of open educational resources, particularly in universities. Um, we already have this connection with open source software. Um, but the, the open data movement uh, needs to become a much more critical part of publishing um, and that in some ways we want to see, a, um, in fact in a couple of ways it's very important to think about open data as being a even bigger uh, contribution to the quality of science. So the idea that we can share data, that we can reanalyze data, that we can um, create, uh, get greater value from the data that we have collected and learn more about that from sharing the data. Um, is a really important aspect. So the quality of science um, is becoming more and more the focus of open science. So let's say that the big transition and the big challenge is that not only open but better, not only free but a higher quality. Uh, and I think the exciting part going forward is that every initiative um, that increases openness has to also be able to point to how it improves the quality of the scholarship, of the research, of the knowledge, of what's being shared. 